welcome to the first lesson of Unit 3. This is the last of our um, derivative rules mini-series, if you will. Um, and this is, this is a big one. It's about applying the chain rule. The chain rule is probably one of the most easily looked over rules by students who are new to calculus. Um, it is uh, a... Um, a point of constant feedback from instructors um, to students. Hey, you forgot the chain rule. Hey, don't forget the chain rule. Hey, is the chain rule something that applies here? Uh, and in most cases, it does. So um, uh, watch closely. I will do my best to try to explain in detail um, and do engage with the practice. And please, please, please ask if you have questions. So the chain rule is ultimately about how we deal with compositions of functions. Most of the functions that we will deal with will be some form of a composition of functions, some function plugged into another. What we've seen so far has been the derivative rules, or we, what we would call the basic differentiation rules or rules for differentiation, as applied to non uh, or functions that are not compositions. So sine of x is not a composition of functions, but the sine of 2x is. Um, and so most of what we will see in our free response questions and so forth uh, deal with functions that are compositions of functions. And so the chain rule is something that has always got to be in the back of our minds as something that may possibly apply. So um, when dealing with a composition of functions, the derivative of the function as a whole is the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inside function. Okay. So let's take a look at an example. So in this first example, I want to show how um, the problem can be broken down into the outer and inner functions. So the outer function here is the cosine function. So it's the cosine of something. Uh, that something in green, 3x squared minus 4x, that's my inner function. And so I might label the outer function as f of u, so cosine of u, and the inner function is just u, 3x squared minus 4x. So we will differentiate the outer function and get the derivative of f with respect to u, or df du, um, is equal to negative sine u, and then differentiate the inner function as well. Now notice, ultimately what I want is the derivative of f with respect to x, which would be df dx. So by multiplying df du by du dx, the du's cancel, and I'm left with df dx. So multiplying those two pieces together, and then substituting back in what I had set u as, I obtain my final answer. Okay, So my final answer should always be in terms of x, never in terms of u, um, if this method is a method that you choose to use. Um, we would like to get to a place where we're not having to define what u is. We can sort of see what it is, and the derivative kind of happens in our head. But understandably, initially, um, writing things out in these multiple uh, forms can be helpful. So let's take a look at another example. Um, sine of 2x, and I want to find the derivative. So the derivative of the outer function is cosine. Notice that what's inside of the outer function didn't change. So I still have the cosine of 2x times the derivative of what's inside. What's inside is 2x, the derivative of which is 2. And then just, this is just cleaning things up. Uh, next example, we have the function e to the x squared. So my outer function is e or uh, the exponential function e to the x or e to the u and the inner function is x squared so the derivative of the outer function which is e raised to a power is as we saw in a previous lesson itself the derivative of e to the x squared is e to the x squared times the derivative of what's inside and what's inside is x squared the derivative of which is 2x cleaning things up 
And then for the last example on this slide, we have the secant of e to the x. So the derivative of secant is secant tan. And notice that what's plugged inside of secant and tangent is exactly what was plugged into the original function. It's what was the inside function. And then we're multiplying by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is e to the x, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay. In this last example, I wanted to show uh, an example of where the chain rule can happen multiple times. So we have a chain rule inside of a chain rule inside of a chain rule inside of a chain rule. Here we have the cotangent of the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 3. So anytime I said the word of, there's going to be a chain rule because I'm signifying that there is a function with something plugged into it. So starting with the outermost function, the derivative of cotangent. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant cotangent, and everything that was plugged inside stays plugged inside. Then we move one step in. The derivative of natural log. The derivative of natural log is 1 over the argument of the log. And then move one step in. This is the square root function. The derivative of square of uh, square root of u would be 1 half times u to the negative 1 half. And then move one final step in. And we have the derivative of x squared plus 3 to the x, which is 2x plus 3. In the next step, we're just cleaning things up. I like to write stuff without negative exponents uh, where possible. Um, if there was an opportunity to cancel things in the numerator and the denominator, I would. But in this case, there isn't. So my answer stays like this. Okay. So the chain rule is always in effect. If you're ever unsure of if the chain rule applies, just use it. You can't be wrong. So for example, if I were to apply the chain rule to this function, we would take the derivative of the outside, which is something cubed, so it's a power rule, multiply by three, decrease the power by one to two, the inside stays the inside, 4 minus, or excuse me, x minus 4, and then I multiply by the derivative of x. Well, the derivative of x is just 1. And so my answer remains 3 times x minus 4 squared. Okay, in a, kind of a similar example, the derivative of tangent, if I multiply, the derivative of the outer function is uh, secant squared. What's inside is just x. The derivative of x is just 1. So, in summary, stay calm, learn your differentiation rules. The chain rule is always in effect, and when in doubt, apply the chain rule. You cannot go wrong. The derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.